It's a terrifying health scare for any patient or parent. A seemingly healthy young man is rushed to emergency. He's fit and has no history of serious illness, yet he has heart trouble, potentially life-threatening trouble. The patient is 14 years old. The young patient's condition is diagnosed as Lyme carditis. This happens when the Borrelia bacteria enters the heart tissues. On this Looking at Lyme podcast, we're going to a research hospital in Kingston, Ontario, and we are going straight to the heart to learn more about this condition. Dr. Adrian Baranchuk is a cardiologist at the Kingston General Hospital Research Institute, and he has seen this scary scenario unfold. He has seen patients with a sudden onset of dizziness, shortness of breath, and chest pain. One of the patients was just 14, yet had the symptoms of a much, much older man with heart trouble. Dr. Baranchuk joins us now from his clinic in beautiful Kingston, Ontario. Thank you, Adrian, for joining us. Thanks, Sarah, for having me. It's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to chat with you about Lyme carditis, how to diagnose it, and the consequences for the patients. Tell me about the first patient that you saw with Lyme carditis. So you you did a very good summary. Now we are uh, on our 16 case, but the very first case, um, it it was uh, quite troubling and, and made me reflect a lot on the lack of education in this topic. So basically, um, a former resident of us called me from uh, another hospital close to Kingston in a city called Belleville. And she says to me that she has a young man with a very advanced AV block, which for your audience, this is a, a shutdown of the electrical system of the heart. And that she was proceeding to put a temporary pacemaker, and she wanted to transfer the patient to me. This is a a Friday or Saturday night to put a pacemaker on this young individual. So I say, well, that's okay. I can call the the urgency team and do this tonight. So please feel free to transfer. And she says to me like a a quick sentence that kept resonating in my mind. Mm. She said, okay, I'm going to take serology to measure for Lyme and then after putting the temporary pacemaker I will transfer to Kingston say well that's good so I call the team so this is about five to six people that have to come to hospital to do this as an emergency and while driving that thing of I'm going to do serology for Lyme kept resonating in my mind and the only thing that was coming to me is is this not a transient inflammatory disease. Is, is this not transient? So I arrive to the hospital as early as I can. And before going to the, to the operating room, I am checking on what is available in the literature for Lyme carditis. And indeed what I find is that there are reports of cases where antibiotics <clears throat> have resolved the problem. Mm-hmm. So when I make it to my mind that maybe leaving this patient with a temporary wire while the antibiotics are making its work, just waiting and see if this young individual is going to need a pacemaker for the rest of his life or not, I go and I ask my team uh, not to prepare everything and to go back home. That is not an easy task to do because these people is making money on coming in the middle of the night to do the case. But they understood that there was certainly a possibility that this condition could be transient. I explained this to the patient and to the parents because he was a minor, that I was going to come the very next day and over the weekend to check on the evolution of his electrical shot now. To my surprise, by day three, the electrical system starts to recover slowly but progressively to the point that after a week 
of being admitted to hospital, the patient has a completely normal electrical system. So we removed the temporary wire, and I was thinking, how can I assess that the conduction system will respond to the demand of a young, fit individual? And this is when we decided to do a stress test, put him on a treadmill, and we see that this heart was responding perfectly normal to exercise. So we checked the CDC recommendations. We decided to give him a total of three weeks of antibiotics. And that sort of was the starting of the creation of a model that now has been replicated several times, as said, is replicated in the CDC website. And um, several people is using the models that we created to diagnose and suspect when Lyme could be the cause of an electrical shutdown and how to manage these cases. Wow. What and now, the, that, go ahead, please. Oh, that's just an incredible case study and, and a really great example of learning in action on your part as well. Uh, it, it, it did require a lot of uh, personal education because I do admit that Lyme was within the list but I was, for example, totally unaware that I was living in an endemic region for Lyme. Uh, how endemic? Well, last week, uh, my uh, best pal in the hospital, his two-year-old daughter developed a classic rash that helps doctors identify Lyme. He mailed it to me and said, I think this is Lyme to me. And I said, it's not to you, it's to everybody. This is Lyme, go to hospital now. Now she's on antibiotic, completely recovered. Uh, there was no heart involvement, but something that we learned is that the heart gets involved uh, in Lyme disease way more often than what we knew 10 years ago. So uh, initially we were quoting old studies indicating maybe two to 4% of people with Lyme disease will have some degree of Lyme carditis. And a very recent study done in the States in kids has shown that the prevalence is up to 10%. So that makes us believe that obtaining a simple, inexpensive 12 lead ECG, which shows the electrical component of the heart should be mandatory to all people with a diagnosis of Lyme disease or suspicion of Lyme disease in the emergency room. Right. And to become part of our regular practice. So that would be one of the diagnostic tests that doctors could use? That is correct. So basically, there are two ways to lead yourself to the diagnosis of Lyme carditis. One is, and this is something that we are advocating from a group of uh, patients, families, and scientists is to bring the ECG as part of the battery tests that you do for any person suffering from Lyme disease. The second way to suspect that is a little bit more tricky, which is there are many conditions that produce electrical shutdown in addition to Lyme disease. For example, if you are 75 and you become dizzy or you have a fainting episode, somebody does an ECG and you are in high degree AV block, which is the famous shutdown of the electricity, the possibilities of that being Lyme are less than 1%. Less than 1%. Why? Because aging and coronary artery disease are way more frequent than Lyme in that uh, group of individuals. However, if, if you are 14, like in the case presented by you, or you are 25, you're perfectly healthy, and you develop a high degree AB block or shutdown of the electricity, Lyme should be one of the first things that you have to think about. Right. And for that, Sarah, is that our lab created the so-called SILK score or suspicious index in Lyme carditis which brings an acronym that doctors have been now replicating again and again in the literature called COSTAR. The COSTAR acronym checks for what we call constitutional symptoms, activities in the outdoor space, 
the S goes for sex male because so far the relationship men to women is in the ballpark of six to eight to one, meaning I see six to eight male to find one female with Lyme carditis. The T is for the tick bite. If someone comes to you with a fainting episode saying, I removed a tick or I saw a tick bite and I had a rash, now it resolved. That is very orientative that what you're seeing could be Lyme carditis. The A is for age less than 50 because maybe due to epidemiological reasons, young individuals are more frequently exercising in the outdoors or having jobs associated with outdoors where the tick bites can occur. And of course, the famous rash, when it is present in a patient with an advanced high degree AVA block, it's almost pathognomonic of Lyme carditis. So, so simple to determine that a high degree AVA block is due to Lyme carditis that if a patient has a rash, I don't even need the serology. That is Lyme carditis until you prove otherwise. So in our experience, every person presenting with either a tick bite or a rash and complete heart block, that is always Lyme carditis. So in that case, so, it would stay on the differential diagnosis for those patients? Not, not only in the differential diagnosis, but very high in the list. Uh -huh. So if you have a co-star of more than three points, Lyme disease climbs up to the top of your list of things to take care of. And this is very important to understand, Sarah, because since you order a serology until the serology comes, if you don't do anything, the patient could die. Simple like that. So what is the recommendation? Patient has advanced high degree AB block to say it in simple terms, a shutdown of, of the electrical system of the heart. You suspect because you have a co-star acronym of more than three points that this could be Lyme carditis. So the procedure is one admission of the patient on a telemetry unit that can be the coronary unit, the ICU, you name it. But the patient needs to be monitored 24 over seven and I will explain later why. Okay. The second thing is you take a serology immediately, depending where you live in the States in Canada, it may take from one day to five days to return. And three, you start IV antibiotics. And you may say, Adrian, but there's no confirmation yet. It's, it is true when we balance the risk of receiving antibiotic for nothing versus not receiving the antibiotic for a transient condition that can kill you, then the benefit goes to start the antibiotic. And then you will wait for two things. One, the serology to come back. And if it is positive, you confirm. If it is negative, you're not ruling it out because there are Lyme carditis that present with negative serology. We can spend some time on that. All right. I'm so, so yeah, I'm so thankful for your research. And, you know, we'll make sure that we post uh, information about the Silk Score and the, the CoStar on our website as well. I will be delighted to provide you with, uh, with the links and the... Um, and the PDFs of these papers, so you can help us spread out the voice. Absolutely. Believe it, believe it or not, there's still a lot of centers across North America that are not familiarized with this. Yeah, so what are the long-term long -term effects of Lyme carditis? Okay, so now we, we are talking something called early disseminated Lyme carditis. You got Lyme and you develop this within four to six weeks. If you have Lyme carditis manifested as a shutdown of the electrical system and you don't diagnose it and you don't treat it, the probabilities of that event resulting in death are quite high. 90% yeah. of the patients presented with Lyme carditis have this type of presentation, while the other 10%, they will present with a process called myocarditis, which is a global inflammation of the heart that, again, not diagnosed and properly treated could result in death. Now, your question is very interesting. interesting. So what happens if you do diagnose and you do treat these patients? 
And I'm happy to report, I'm happy to share with you the recent publication in, in Current Problems in Cardiology of our first series of patients properly diagnosed and treated for Lyme uh, carditis with all the sequence that we discussed. Some of them did need temporary pacing, but none of them, these are seven patients, no one of them received a permanent pacemaker and they were follow up. Now the average is 2.4 years. Wow, that's incredible. All of them, Sarah, all of them doing their normal life, return to work, not taking any medications, all of them supervised in our clinic, normal structural heart, no consequences of what happened. Well, that so is that, great news for everybody, truly. And and, and let, let me contribute to the great news with one more <laughs> piece that is coming soon. And this is a beautiful collaboration between Canada and the States. I was, I was telling you, some centers still don't know about this, right? Yes. So I had the opportunity early 2021, so the late 2020 and 2021, so in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, to uh, take care of two patients, one male and one female. They presented with Lyme symptoms and with shutdown of the electrical system of their hearts, different hospitals. Case number one, the ear doctor suspects that this is Lyme. So he takes the serology and transfers the patient to a different hospital. So to get a pacemaker implanted. Patient goes there, gets a pacemaker implanted a permanent pacemaker. A week later, she received a phone call from hospital one that the doctor in the ER wanted to talk to her. And he says to her, you tested positive for Lyme. Come back to the ER. I'm going to give you antibiotics for the next four weeks. She received the antibiotic treatment, went back home, then decided to move to the Kingston region And looking in the internet, she finds my name and requests the family doctor to send a referral for the pacemaker to be follow up, right? Absolutely. Well, what what I found was that the first week she used the pacemaker between 35 to 50% of the time. After the four weeks of antibiotic treatment, she used the pacemaker less than 1% of the time. Oh, that's incredible. I mean, and it's just so important to collect that information and that data. Do you, do you well, think Lyme-related health problems are on the radar for family physicians, emergency doctors, and cardiologists in well, Canada? This <laughs> this is ref, a ref, what I just told you is a reflection that yeah. more education is needed mm-hmm. because she got the pacemaker. So now I have two options. I said, I'm sorry you got this pacemaker. You're going to live with this piece of hardware for the rest of your life. You will have to replace your battery every 10 years with a minor but existing risk of infection. Well, we do that. We do it all the time, but it's not risk-free, right? Or I could do all the evaluations of your heart that I do for the patients that did not get a permanent pacemaker. And if you pass all these tests, then we can think in extracting your pacemaker. You understand this, Sarah? Yes, absolutely. got the pacemaker... Now I take responsibility. Both cases occur within a year where the extraction of the pacemaker can be done manually with less than 1% risk of damaging the heart when you do that. Okay? Absolutely. To make this story short, both patients completed all the tests, passed all the tests, demonstrated that they were not using the pacemaker except for less than 1% of the time during the night when the heart rate physiologically slows down so the pacemaker doesn't know and kicks in. And we extracted both pacemakers. Both stories were quite similar. They got the permanent pacemaker. They received the proper treatment during the period of the pre-implant. They completed that. They were not using the pacemaker. So now it's five to six months since then, both patients are having a normal life. Uh, Listen to this very carefully, sorry. I will try to explain it to your audience. When you put a pacemaker, the tip of the pacemaker has a screwing system. So in order to remove it, I had to unscrew that system. 
all right? But that has been in direct contact with heart tissue. Now I have two leads from each patient on my hands. So what I did is I cut the tip of those leads and send it to the USA to a fantastic company that could run a DNA testing using PCR, very similar to what we do to detect COVID, to determine whether there was DNA of the bacteria that produces life. Wow. Why did we decide to do that, Sarah? Because there are reports of patients with properly treated Lyme disease that unfortunately several years later after receiving multiple courses of antibiotics, when they died, they do a necropsy of the brain and in the brain, there was persistence of bacteria. Of course, that my technique is not perfect because I am not taking samples of all the heart. I'm taking samples only from where the leads were attached. But I'm happy to report to you that in the four samples from two patients, there, were, there was no DNA of the bacteria. So it seems that the antibiotic, at least for the heart, if given properly, at least the three weeks of full antibiotic treatment seems to be enough to clear the persistence of the bacteria in the heart. And therein lies the future of Lyme carditis research. This is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian, for sharing your expertise and your research with us. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. So we are dedicating the next two years to explore your prior question, which is we do know, and the scientific community from the hand of, of John Alcott from John, Johns Hopkins admit that there are, there are patients with long-term um, Lyme disease. As we are now learning about the long-term COVID, we do admit that there are patients that persist with symptoms and it seems that they, they persist with some uh, uh, bacteria refractoriness to the current antibiotics that we're using. Well, However, in the heart, Sarah, we still don't know. For the heart problem, we don't know if there is a model that could potentially explain a long-term cardiomyopathy associated with Lyme. So this is where are we directing our efforts now, is to try to understand whether this could happen to humans and this could happen to patients. Because if we discover that and Indeed, there is a possibility of a um, chronic model for Lyme carditis as it exists for Lyme disease, then the efforts should be directed towards finding alternative of treatments that could improve those patients. Oh, that's incredible. Well, we will definitely get you back on the podcast to tell us about all of your future research as well. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for your time, and you count on us uh, whenever you think it's appropriate. Thank you for the opportunity. That was Dr. Adrian Baranchuk from the Kingston General Hospital Research Institute talking about Lyme carditis. I was really interested to hear about his observations about transient inflammatory disease and how Lyme carditis can be treated so effectively in the acute phase. Thank you, Dr. Baranchuk, for taking the time. That's another podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Cormode. Stay safe in the outdoors.